Hey everybody, welcome to Bad Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. It's a comic book show where we take a Batman comic and then explain it to people who didn't read it so we can get some fun conversations out of it. It's a sister show to another show called Back Issues where we talk about another comic book that's not Batman related. So you can see the very distinct difference between those two shows. Yes. Also, this one is a Bat-themed set, so you know. It's got that going for us. We're talking about Batman Green Arrow Poison Tomorrow, written by Denny O'Neill with art by Michael Netzer. This book has been requested by members of our audience so much, <laughs> we have two copies. <laughs> and it's such a weird book. And I don't know why anyone would want us to talk about it's it. It's a strange title. It the is. The Poison Tomorrow. The Poison Tomorrow. What, like, maybe it's got something to do with the future, or some kind of time travel, or at the very was, least, a time capsule or something. None. If nope. it was poisoned, like the poisoned tomorrow, I can yeah. understand that. But the poison tomorrow is like, it's the poison I'm going to give you tomorrow. I guess. <laughs> it, you know, it's funny. The You're not wrong. <laughs> it's... It's about poison, and I Tomorrow. guess I, I guess the the clock is running out. Okay. So I guess that's where the title comes from. Right. It's primarily a Batman book. Green Arrow happens to also be in it. Well, he's he's much smaller on the cover. Oh so yeah, no, that's the, they're like don't don't expect a whole lot in terms of, of Green Ollie. Arrow. I'm no. just saying. Although we do have two billionaires in this book. Now. You do, yeah, and they don't do that thing where it's like, okay, we got two heroes, we're gonna have two villains, you know, one of Batman's, one of Ollie's. No. It's just Poison Ivy. Okay. Yay! Basically Penny! illustrating, yeah, your favorite, one of your favorite bat villains. She really is. Is Poison Ivy. Why? I don't know. I just, I, I think because the animated series made her just such a powerful and intelligent and like this beautiful woman like comes in there. She's this femme fatale, but she will ruin you. What an incredible voice on top of it. Also, I was really big into the environment. Not that I'm not now, but like I was just like, crusading! Yeah. Yeah! I never went to any rallies ever. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Unlike another episode of this show where Poison Ivy is used as a plot device, yes. she is the villain of this story. Yay. And she illustrates that Green Arrow could never hack it in Gotham City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was too much of a people person. <laughs> yeah, we were people in Gotham suck. And that being said, there was, uh, this is during the time. Yeah. When Ollie had moved to Seattle. Oh. So forget Star City. Right. Seattle, straight up. It was during that kind of like Grell run that we did of Longbow Hunters. Yes. Yep. So that's the Ollie we're thinking of. Just this is an Ollie who is willing to kill people, who loves Dinah. Yeah. Who is living with her, and it's a whole... Thing and it's a much more adult-oriented comic, right? And also, there's Batman, and okay. so Batman is set against this very interesting, complex version of Green Arrow. Sure. And Batman okay. doesn't care a lick of it. I was it's just Batman, just being like, okay, well, I guess you can ride in the Batmobile then. Mm. Like, come on. He doesn't even refer to him colloquially. They're not friends in this book. No, he's like, I don't like. It's you. very post-crisis, where like for no reason they extend the lack of relationship between all these characters, where it's like they barely know each other. And you're like, that happened in 86. It's 91, guys. Come on. It's been five years. You know, I in real time. He doesn't like him. It's because he's like, you're getting laid, Ollie. I don't care for that. Yeah. You're basically me. You're green me, and you're getting on the regular. That I can't stand for. No, you know what it is? You look like a Robin to me. What's with all these bright colors? <laughs> yeah. He's all green, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's but only like... one aspect. Well, the, the, the beard is the yellow part. Right, he's like, here, now put on this red sash. All right. There. Now okay. you're now, ready to now we're comfortable. Now you can okay. ride in the Batmobile. He's like, I'm not wearing the Maverick. I'm not wearing the sash! So Batman Green Hour of the Poison Tomorrow opens with a malformed, disease-ridden man. So Batman fights this guy. Sure. And when he identifies him as Dr. Parsons, like, the guy's a doctor. He's not a... He is an axe-wielding maniac, but he's not, like, the next big supervillain. So Batman just what kicks him in the chest. What the hell are you talking chest. about, Doc? Doctors are villains all the time! Actually, yeah. most of Batman's villains, including the villain of the story, is also a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But he is riddled with disease. So? I would say at this point, like, this guy is ready to be a supervillain. Yeah. He should just be chucking batarangs left yeah. and right. This should be the axe. Dr. Axe. That's, He's a doctor, and he wields an axe. He's gonna ask you a question. That's right. And nobody wants to answer it. Well, instead of any of that, Batman just kicks him in the chest, and he's down for the count. Oh. Not only is he down for the count, he coughs up blood. Oh, yeah, no, this guy's dying. So he brings him outside, and it's revealed that we're in a baby food delivery truck. And Green Arrow's there waiting for him, and he's like, you have Dr. Parsons, I'm leaving with him. And Batman's like, you're not. No conversation or anything about, like, why. Mm -hmm. Just it's simple. Finders keepers. Well, it, literally that. Batman's like, he committed a crime here, so he's got to stay. Ah. And Ollie's like, well, I'll have to shoot you with my bow and arrow, 
unless you give him to me. And Batman's like, Bring it on. And then they just get into each other's faces. And Ollie's got his like Harrison Ford pointer finger right in his nose. And he's like, I need you to knock it off and stop being Batman for a second. Because like, I'm taking this guy with me and I'll give you context as to why. And Batman's like, <laughs> okay. You might have wanted to lead with the context. Yeah. Why does nobody lead with the context? It's, it's male the machismo. They're billionaires, it's, Tiffany. Oh yeah, that's true. They're rich on top of being right. macho superhero men. Right. I just, I get what I want. When I want it. Yeah. So, Ollie regales Batman with this story about how Dinah's friends with a lady who has a newborn and she's like stuck at home and she can't go get baby food. So, Dinah's out there at the baby food section grabbing baby food for her when Dr. Parsons starts smashing all the baby food in the grocery store. And Dinah's like, yo, what are you doing? Yeah. This so, is in Seattle though, right? That's in Seattle, yes. So then uh, he bit her and then she kicked the crap out of him. Right. And then Ollie saw it all happening from outside because he was along with her and then went to attend her and then punched him in the stomach and face for good measure. <laughs> this guy's been through a lot, this Dr. Parsons. Yeah. So they take him down, he goes into custody, and then when Ollie checks up on him, he's already been sprung and he's in Gotham City. Is this one of those we don't know where Gotham is in comparison to anything? To Seattle? It could be West Coast, or East Coast, or it's, who knows? For my money, Gotham is always heart. on the East Coast. <laughs> so, like, he took a seven-hour plane ride, and now In that he's state. Here. Like, he's just sitting there in business class yeah. or in coach. <laughs> Holding his axe. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which, because I guess the TSA didn't exist then. No. They were totally cool with. I'm sure that... Sir, s- sir. You have to put Your that axe at least has to go in, in the, the overhead compartment. compartment. I'm sorry. Peanuts? I was he gonna say you're not buy allowed to a bring plane more than tickets. two axes. <laughs> <laughs> One can go under your seat. He didn't ride coach to Gotham. It was sprung by someone with money and means. Oh, so he was in first class. Ha! <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> well, then you're allowed to bring as many axes as you want. Uh, champagne. <laughs> Within a day of being bitten by Parsons, Dinah slips into a coma. And also develops like all these horrible rashes and warts and stuff. Oh my okay. God. She's gonna become. She's gonna also gra- like gravitate towards axes. Yes. After this. Okay. Yeah. So he's like the zombie axe or something. Can I ask... He makes other people into people like him. Yeah. What is up with this Batmobile? This is a '90s Batmobile. This is the Mat- Batmobile I've from the '90s. Never. This looks like a slipper. I've never seen this Batmobile in my life. I. You have, but you haven't seen it done by Michael Netzer. They're driving this ugly Batmobile. Sure. When. Parson starts going into a coughing fit. And as he's coughing out his last breath, he says, I love her, I love Ivy so much. And we get a flashback to why he loves Ivy so much. Right. It's because... I mean, I'm no complaint here. Right. Yeah. Well, so Pamela Isley is doing a, like, checkup at Dr. Parson's clinic. Mm-hmm. And Parson's like, well, uh, for all his purposes, you know, your physical's through, and while you seem quite fine, uh, you should be dead because your body is riddled with toxins. You have, like, a thousand pathogens within you. And it's like you subsist on them. That's how crazy healthy you look, but deadly you are. Oh, it's the Mr. Burns theory. Exactly. (laughs) So he's just like, I've never seen such a healthier woman who is subsisting on a sea of toxins. And she's like, and have you ever seen anyone as pretty as me? And he's like, "Uh, I have not. (laughs) And she's like, and have you ever like been with a woman? And he's like, I don't really have a lot of time for that. The man's clearly in his like 60s. 70s maybe and it's also, like also like I'm not looking for a male practice suit here yeah no he is he's totally down because she's like grabbing his face bringing her face in he's like well okay let's do this I yeah, mean that not? could be her affecting him oh definitely we don't know no she is I mean like the fact is she's wearing a negligee so yeah. like she's attractive she's going to have just the just the straight up biological wiles over this man yeah and also she has the ability to control the wills of men using her pathogens right I don't know which one is one or the other. I will say that in the coloring for this page, he's kind of like filled with kind of like a purple glow. Right. It may be like a visual indicator that she's, you know, controlling him. I think it's just the way they did the shadows. I think it's just the shadows. (laughs) He's just, he's just, he's just, you know. He's just in. He's he's down. Right. He's like, I only have so much longer to live. Exactly. Yes. Heart attack, here I come. Right. He's just like, why not? I mean, I no. Yeah. I go out, I'm going out like this. So clearly they, they bang, and then like he's covered in these horrible things, and then he dies. He says, the last thing he says is, love Ivy, to the, love Ivy to the bone, got a cure, skeletons got a cure, and then he dies. Skeletons? Skeletons. 
So then, oh, oh we're all just skeletons. Yeah. That was his last philosophical right, thought right. before he died. That's his that's his breadcrumb. He's, he's like, that's leaving all a clue. Left. Yeah. yeah. So Ollie grapples with this dead man. He's like, You can't be dead! Dinah needs you, you fool! In this gigantic car. I know. <laughs> so then Batman's like, right on, okay, well, I got a forensic guy who can do an autopsy on the quick. I'll call him in because he owes me a favor. We'll drop the body off. He'll do the autopsy and get is me it, some... Is some... it Alfred? No. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought it was Batman. I'm like, no, do me. the autopsy. No, no. I he know has, a guy. He has professionals do that. He has Albert Lyle for that. And Albert <laughs> Lyle's going to take care of it. Okay. Meanwhile, we cut to Ivy's lair, mm -hmm. which is her just like dressed as Ivy. Mm -hmm. In early 90s, she's wearing what would inspire the animated series costume to be. So I she's have straight a up... statue of this costume in the other room. I know. I love it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she is chatting with another person who's wearing a hazmat suit. And he's like, how is your experiment going? And she's like, oh, it's fantastic. Tomorrow we'll have conclusive results. A hazmat suit or an AIM suit if you're Ethan and exactly. you drew it on our... <laughs> <laughs> on our sister show, Comic Pop Draws. That's right. <laughs> Ivy's clearly responsible for Dr. Parsons' disease. What? They were tracking him. They sprung him and sent him to Gotham. So she's showing the effects of this disease that she's concocted on her, like, guinea pig, Jason. Just don't be named Jason in Gotham. I know. It doesn't just, work out. Not, mm. <laughs> but she's saying, like, so I've made this. Uh, the I'm going to give him a dose of the serum that Dr. Parsons created, which should reverse the effects and you should be delighted by the results and so you know that's that's what we're doing so clearly like there's there's this fellow who was working with ivy who mm -hmm. is developing this biological weapon okay if he doesn't turn into a plant with the cure nope or a baby with the cure then i am lost because <laughs> i don't understand the baby food connection mm -hmm. yeah no it's true it it'll all become clear but it's not like, you don't rack your brain over it. Like, it's not, you know, there's no, like, degenerative disorder that makes them into babies or anything. The baby food doesn't, isn't, like, a key ingredient, like, in the Joker toxin from Batman 89. Yeah. Like, no. no. Okay. Fenn is like, well, I guess I'll go. I gotta pick up my kids and hang out with them, so see you later. And she's like, okay, well, have a good one. <laughs> and so he leaves. And I have he, a PTA meeting to get to, okay? Can we wrap this up? Oh, this is father of the year right here. <laughs> no, Fenn is father of the year. He exits the... I don't know, Horsey estate? Zone. Well, he exits the estate that Ivy's set up in, and it is revealed it's actually within a quarantine zone. And so he's got to get through, like, several gates in order to even get to this Ivy. This is a way more, like, toxic version of this character. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, Ivy is riddled with disease. She is patient zero for, like, the Hanta virus. Like, that's how messed up she is. Colin Dustin you, Hoffman. You shouldn't go near her. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> bad, bad idea. Yeah. Uh, so, Fen leaves, he exits the area, he takes off the hazmat suit, so they have to burn the damn thing, gets into the limousine, where his kids are waiting for him. He's like, hey guys, what's going on? Let's go. They're out in the car? Yeah, they're in the car. Oh, diseases don't travel through cars. So, they uh, they get into the car, he's father of the year, he's playing with his kids, the kids are like, hey, can we get ice cream? He's like, oh, I gotta make a quick, important business call, hang on. So, Finn uh, picks up his hilarious looking car phone, which is really cool, because, you know, He's rich. Car phone. You can make phones in the car. Well, it's a limo, right? Yeah, it's, that's right. It's fresh limo. That's how Ooh. we can fit all these children in there. <laughs> so, uh, Fenn calls this guy Wilkins, and he's like, so what's the word on Parsons? Like, you're tailing him, right? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, he is wrecked. <laughs> and then Fenn's like, okay, well, make sure that the final termination is, at, is, is enacted. Like, take him out. Yeah. He's done all he can. Like, we're, we're, we're good with him. And so then... Wilkins is like, consider it done. He's like, okay, great. Now, did anybody mention ice cream? Let's go. And the kid's are like, yeah! Final termination ice cream! <laughs> Woo! So then uh, Batman blindfolds Green Arrow and brings him to the Batcave so the Green Arrow doesn't know the secret entrance to the Batcave because they're not friends and they don't know each other's secret identities. Right. So Batman takes the call from the autopsy guy and he's like, okay, so here's the deal. How come he's not wearing a hazmat suit? Right? Well, because he, he's dead. Because he's dead. Disease is dead too. Yeah, there we go. I don't... What? So anyway, uh, the autopsy guy calls a Batman. Batman's like, what's the deal? And he's like, he's loaded with this stuff called, like, hemometatrioxin. Basically, his blood cells themselves are contagious. Don't go near this guy. So wait. That's why I'm not wearing a hazmat suit. <laughs> the blood cells are contagious. Well, Tiffany's all the way in the back of the room. Yeah, he's, he's all the fine. way over there. Hey, by the way, uh, Batman, if you get any of the cure over here, or you want to send that my way. Yeah, I could really use it. I'm just, I should, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for a friend. So Green Arrow's like, so that's it? That's all we got? And Batman's like, uh, I've, got a, I've got a villain that specializes in these kinds of poisons. It's poison ivy. We're going to deal with poison ivy. Well, they don't know? I feel like there's like two places superheroes know about. It's like Gotham and Metropolis. You pretty much probably know the dossiers of the villains who run there. Yeah. You don't know about the like 
like voluptuous, sexy, green themed, like villainess, Poison Ivy, Green Arrow. Literally, she's called Poison Ivy. That should have been like the first character on the list that you want to check off. So we cut back to Poison <laughs> Ivy's estate and Fen goes to visit Poison Ivy and he's like, so how's it going? And Poison Ivy's like, behold, look at Jason after I gave him Parson's formula. And Jason is an Adonis. Not only is he purged of the disease, but he's also like buff and sexy. Right. And so he's like, that's awesome. Is it? He looks like he's made of wood or tanned <laughs> leather. Well, yeah. Well, maybe he only like tanned, you know, down the, here. He well, forgot. He just oiled from here down. Exactly. He well, yeah, he's face. so buff he can't actually reach his face yeah. anymore. Oh, no! Okay. So anyway, uh, Isley gives Fen the same treatment. Wait, wasn't the other guy diseased first? Yeah. Yeah, but then this reversed the effects. Right, so was he gonna, is she diseasing him then to reverse the, I don't understand. No, she's just giving him basically immunity to okay. the the horrible degenerative disorder. Okay. Oh, he doesn't wear his uh, hazmat suit now. Well, she sa he says like, how long does it take effect? She goes, oh, immediately. He's like, oh great, well then I'll take off my outfit. And then- I farted here like 10 minutes ago. It's just, it's still <laughs> Take here. a step back. <laughs> not everyone's you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> of course not, I don't wear hazmat suits. Fen talks about being a dad and how great it is and how like, his dad was crappy, so he vowed to be a great dad and how he loves his kids. And you know, he's like, my kids have a little league game that I have to get to, so I gotta go, but thanks for the cure. And mm -hmm. now I'm gonna like work with you. Like, obviously I'm financing your efforts and stuff like that. Yeah. And she's like, well, before you go, like, shouldn't we totally bang? And he's like, well, the game doesn't start for a couple hours. I will say you just immunized me, so yes. Exactly. So then uh, we cut back to the Batcave and Batman and Green Arrow are just like, okay, let's go. It's, the sequence is only there so that Arrow can say, we've been doing this for several hours and you haven't taken your mask off yet. Is that like you all the time? And he's like, basically. You're still wearing your hood indoors. <laughs> it's hours later, he missed the game. The kids have been like waiting for him in like the dark. And he's just like, it was awesome, we had a great time. Yeah. Where are your kids? Who? <laughs> well, <what>? Basically. <laughs> and I think this is the first time we see an affectation that, that Pammy takes on throughout the book where she sucks on her finger. It's a little, like, thing they make her do throughout the whole book. Okay. That's it. Just, like, why does she do it? It's not like she's got some kind of, like, thing in her finger. Nope. It's, she just does that. It's just a way to show that she's, like, a seductress. I've just banged someone. Finger. Basically. I don't know. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... It's not a good phrase, is it? No. no that was bad. <laughs> anyway, so Fen calls Sits up... there with Ernie. Yeah. He's the Bert to this Ernie. That's very true. Well, Fen is in the limo. He calls Wilkins. He wants to know if, like, the termination is in effect. He doesn't know that Parsons is dead. He's been terminated. He's been terminated. Not yet. <laughs> but the squad is in place. And so Batman and Green Arrow go to check on a hunch to find the place where Parsons last stayed, which is in a hotel in Gotham. So they go to the hotel, and they're going up the wall as the kill crew are coming through the front door of Parsons' room. Yeah. And so... Batman and Green Arrow like bust in. Uh, before Batman breaks the window, one of the hazmat guys gets his gun ready, but then Green Arrow just shoots his hand with an arrow and then Batman blasts through the window. I just thought he's like, ow. Yeah, it's just a look of like- And then he's like, who would've thought this would happen? This is not where I saw my day going. No. Green? This arrow's green! And I love- What the hell is this? So Batman smashes the window, he's kicking the crap out of one guy. Another guy goes, oh, it's Batman. And he just jumps out the window. I'm not gonna mess with him, he says. That's fair. And But before he gets out there, Green Arrow comes out through the window with his bow and then just hits him in the junk. <laughs> what? Why? Because right. like, hilarious. You're not going anywhere, that's why. We're not. We're leaving no stone unturned. <laughs> so Batman unmasks one of the members of the crew, recognizes him. He's a stoolie and a stooge for a guy called Lukey the Mouth, who's like another, we don't see him again, it doesn't matter. I, didn't, I don't know why I named him, probably because it was so stupid and memorable. But the point is, <laughs> there's this, he, he's a connected guy, and Batman recognizes him, he's like, he works on stuff right. like, for other bad guys. And it's all connected, and so I'm, I'm figuring this out. Uh, so Arrow torments the guy. He just Batman, says, I'm figuring this out, he doesn't give us any clues, just, oh, this is all coming together. Basically, yes. So why do they need any clues? They're pretty sure Poison Ivy, they know Poison Ivy's involved, just go to every arboreum and overgrow. I know area they don't. Well, they don't know specific. They, they need to narrow it down first. We need to know. Well, there's like a, there's a dozen arboreums in Gotham. <clears throat> Plus, they don't know about the quarantine zone. Well, they do but know about it. Batman not know about the quarantine zone. They don't know she's in it. The like, point is, we have to figure out how to get there. It's a story with a big middle and end. You gotta have some twists and turns. You can't just know everything. 
If Batman be boring, if Batman's like, well, they ah, the problem. They should have given Pammy at the beginning that, to them then. I know. They should have figured that out as they were going along. Yeah. Anyway. So Batman says, like, let's tie them up. The, yeah. the cops have them on everything else. Hey, Parsons is dead, by the way. So you, you're you not going to get any money. Good job, guys. And uh, Yeah, you failed on top of it. We beat you up and you suck at your job. Exactly. I demoralized Also, he's him. already dead. Wait, he's already dead? Yeah. So we won. We did it. Cool. You didn't do anything. We'll collect our money then. <laughs> no. So then, oh. uh, so <laughs> move all again. <laughs> so, so Pammy and Jason are making out, and she's like, "So you were incredible. Your performance was amazing. Your performance of being a horribly diseased person, and the effects of your cure. No, there's just there's this dude who is immune to the disease that Parsons was involved with. Uh-huh. Like Pammy and Jason." are like the 0.08% of people who are not susceptible to that disease. And so she manipulated Jason into joining her ranks. And so the two of them can bang all the time. And they manipulated Fenn into believing that he just got the cure. Okay. I mean, I'd believe that. Yeah. Lol. So their plan is they're going to basically roll out a plague upon the earth. And whoever makes it will be part of... They, her her are, new brood. Is she of, gonna be like Adam and Eve here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but he's not a plant. No. She's just a psycho. Listen, she yeah. This is she has no love of plants in this story. She just is it's just toxic. A, it's a different interpretation yes. of this character. Yes. Okay. She's surrounded by plants. Her clothing is plant themed, but it's not like Batman's like, you better knock it off or I'll drop this rose pot, you know. Hey, that's flower a, pot. That's very specifically from the animated series, and that was a very special rose. It was a very special rose. <laughs> but that does not happen in the story. Okay. So Green Arrow needs a rundown of who Poison Ivy is because he doesn't actually know the entire rose gallery. He's looking at her, he's like, she's hot. Literally. Wait, really? Yeah, he's like, wow. And Batman's like, yeah. You get to fight her? This is going to be fun. He's like, he's like Ollie. Keep it in your pants, man. Yeah. Remember, no. Remember why you're here? It's cute. The, the, two of them, <laughs> the two of them kind of bro out in the Batmobile. Batman, you know, is is showing him the dossier. And, of course, they're all sexy pictures of her. Now, that being said, I'm sure she doesn't take a bad photo. But right. And Green, then Ollie's like, don't worry, I have an arrow for that. It's got a fiber arrow. <laughs> Plong. <laughs> so Ar- Arrow's like, have you ever been tempted by this woman before? And Batman says, some things a gentleman does not discuss. <gasps> And you're like, oh, <laughs> you totally did. Fen goes to visit I- Ivy again. Uh-huh. Only this time he brings his children. To meet their like, new mom? More or less. Where's, oh, no. where's their real mom? She's gone. I don't remember if she's dead or if she divorced him. I think she died. Okay. But, yeah. So he brings them to her and she's like, they are so cute. I trust they're immunized. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I have the doc. I have the doctor give them all their shots. And so they're all good. Okay, so Pam's plan with Jason is to annihilate most of humanity. Right. Ben thinks that he's developed a cure for this horrible disease, and he's going to sell it. When she rolls out this plan to annihilate humanity, exactly. and he's going to make a whole lot of money. Yes, and then and he thinks that she's down to like make all this money. Right, and also take care of his kids. Right. While he's making all this money. Well, I I think he's gonna take care of the kids with her, but the idea is that he's a man of the nineties, of course. Yeah, he's gonna he's he's a yuppie. He's gonna make all of his money through the backs of everyone else's misery. I have a car phone. (laughs) Have you seen it? It's a phone that I can use in my car, and there's not a wire coming out the back. (laughs) I'm loaded. She's like, uh huh. Yeah. So don't worry. Maybe you can get your own car phone. So bad. (laughs) Batman reveals to Ollie that how he, he also knows. has a car phone. <laughs> he does have a car phone. I believe it's a video car phone. So oh, it's even better than Fen's phone. Ollie's having a hard time. But he time, can't like... call anyone on it. Yeah, no one else has a video yeah, phone. Yeah, Ollie doesn't want to call him out and be like, "I'm rich too, you idiot. I have te- I have ten car phones." Anyway, so Batman is like, <laughs> "So like, here's the deal. There was a subdivision like that was built in Gotham or outside of Gotham, uh-huh. and the builders got lazy and they used like asbestos and lead and stuff, and it got quarantined because it was just a it was just a poison factory. People started dying. I think like half a, or two dozen people died within this community, so they just walled it off, and then Ivy moved in. And he knew that. He figured it out. Okay. Sure. How come there's not a giant cloud over? The, the this place is, where this they is are. his place. Oh, that's his place. Yeah, this is this is Batman's. You can this tell is, this is Wayne Manor because it's there's bats. bats. Duh. Oh. Yeah, 
But okay. uh, the reason why he finds out is because he found gas station receipts in Parsons' hotel room that, li- that were near Appleville, the town that was quarantined. Oh, he, he detected. He did. He detected. Appleville? Yeah, it's called Appleville. He didn't check Appleville. What's the Adam and Eve theme? You it's, get it? It's Adam and Eve. It's plant themed. Yeah. You can't have places like this around Gotham. I'm sorry. So they go to Appleville. Meanwhile, Fenn is facilitating the transport of a bunch of baby food that has been laced with this Parsons. They're going to give it to children? And it'll also be a horror story for the news. Like, people will be very quick if, like, you know, a thousand or ten thousand infants all die. Yeah, the FDA is like, we'll put it through. It's fine. Mm -hmm, Exactly. Okie dokie. So... It's not like she's collecting this baby food to, like, feed to some sort of plant babies she's nah. made. That's for the best. Yeah, don't get excited about any more Ivy stuff. Wait. It's basically just, this is this is what you get. So okay. Parson freaked out and was destroying the baby food because he knew the plan? Yeah. So he was a good guy? Yeah. That's he, crazy! Well, he helped make the virus, but then he realized, like, he had a change of heart. When he found out that the plan was to kill children. So maybe he did take the plane. Back to God. Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> he was like, no, no, I can't do Wait. this. Wait. Ah! I think he took a... I still want to bang you, Ivy, though. Hold on. Where is Appleton? Appleville. Appleville? It's like outside of God. It's somewhere between Gotham and, and, and Seattle. That's my problem, right? Listen, so he they left... have to drive pretty far to get <laughs> okay, there. Okay, okay. But so while Batman and Green Arrow are driving to Appleville, they pass the baby truck. Okay. The baby food truck, I yeah. should say. And uh, so Batman, like, just waltzes up to the security guards that are protecting Appleville because it's surrounded by surveillance and security. Yeah. And we're going in. Right, with a significant amount of wind that's facing him. It's coming at him. That's always there. <laughs> so Batman's like, we're going in. And the security guards are like, like fun you are. And then so they get into a fight. Like, because we got to see a fight scene. Right. There's too much talking. We've got to beat somebody up. And it's great because Batman's, like, punching this one guy. And then Arrow just goes, oh, screw this. And he shoots one of the dudes through the shoulder with a, with an arrow. And it basically intimidates everyone and they just knock it off. They're like, oh. And Getting then, punched is one thing, but an arrow through the shoulder? Like, I'm stabbed! Well, can you imagine <laughs> if we took one to the knee? Oh. oh you'd be done forever. You'd never stands. adventure again. No. No. So anyway, yeah. Batman takes a second, looks at the bodies, sees the ground, notices the tire tracks, and he's like, these are big tire tracks. And the trucks that we passed were big trucks. Big trucks, and... (gasps) Wait a minute, no, I'm getting it. Hang on, I'm detecting. (laughs) Yeah, well, because then he's like, wait a minute, we picked up... Ollie's in the Batmobile (laughs) driving away after... (laughs) Yeah. Ollie, I'm freaking... Oh, he's gone. Oh, damn it. (laughs) Oh, he figured it out like 10 minutes ago. So anyway, (laughs) Batman realizes, like, so Dinah was attacked in a food store in the baby food section... And we just passed a baby food truck. Ah, we gotta go after the truck. And Oliver's like, no, we need to stop Ivy. She's the problem. And he's like, no, the babies are the problem. We gotta save these babies. Yeah. He's like, and, I don't know if you know this. Anything you have to do with Gotham and babies, it's not gonna be good, yeah, well, okay? But Ollie doesn't even put together the baby food's poison until after Batman basically spells it out. Well, I don't even care if it's poison or not. If, if it has to do with creepy babies, a lot of babies, mm-hmm. dead babies. It's just bad. Like, it is bad. You gotta stop the truck. That's right. So... Green Arrow refuses to believe there isn't a cure, and he thinks that it's in Ivy's lair. Sure. So he's like, my priority is to save Dinah. I don't care about babies. Right. So I've got to go in there. Unless they're with Dinah. i got to go in there, and i got to... Making them. Thank you. He's like, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to get the cure. Maybe you can go stop the baby truck. And Batman's like, if you go in there... Put on a hazmat suit or something. Yeah, because she is going to, like, lure you like you wouldn't believe. Well, also, the whole area is just swimming with diseases. Well, yeah, that too. So, Ollie's like, look, I saw her on your video screen. There's no way I'm not going to bang this chick. <laughs> it's already going to happen. We have to go after the baby truck. Baby truck. Nope. Yeah. I'm going inside to bang Poison Ivy. So, Don't tell Dinah. Green Arrow <laughs> goes into the lair. Pammy's got the whole place wired for security. She's watching him go in. Mm-hmm. She's like, okay, so Jason, you're going to fight him. And he's like, okay. Uh, so Batman uses the Batmobile. He fights the truck. Yeah. He winds up getting the Batmobile destroyed <laughs> by the truck, thankfully, because this car sucks. Yay! And uh, Batman sacrifices the horrible Batmobile that to That truck go. driver is the hero of this book. He really is. He vanquished the Batmobile that yeah. everyone hates. It's also, like, barely damaged. No, it's rad. I mean, that, like... That truck is, no, like... Truck. Oh, yeah, no, the truck is, like... Yeah, it's, like, reinforced or something. <laughs> so... But, but what, ba- what basically happens is Batman leaps out of the Batmobile, he punches the driver in the face, pulls the wheel as they're going over a bridge, and just dives the truck over the bridge. Isn't that a little, uh, okay, so, hang on. 
baby food is often in glass bottles, mm -hmm. um, which is now in this water supply. Yeah, well, it's fine. Don't worry about it. They don't. Ollie fights Jason, who is the souped up dude. Yeah, he's he's badass wearing bike shorts. He's ready to go. He really is. He's either ready to go lift weights, ride a bike. Possibly go to spin class. Go to spin or fight Green Arrow. Uh, they or fight. beat up Rocky. Yeah. So they're fighting, and Ollie, through his internal monologue, reveals that, like, the hazmat suit is inhibiting his ability to do anything. Like, the suit is too bulky. He can't knock arrows. He can't really, like, get the maneuverability he needs. The suit is just in the way. And he keeps thinking about Dinah dying, and he's like, I have to believe there's a cure. So he just rips off the suit, exposing himself to wow. the poisons. And he's like, let's do this. And he just beats the crap out of Jason and Yay. knocks Jason through the window into Ivy's command center, surprising her. And she's like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> he starts to fall for her while she's pulling him in. He's about to make out with her. And then he just face palms her. <laughs> he just grabs her face and he goes, no. <laughs> and then he grabs her throat and pulls her hair and he goes, where do you like that? Her hair? Yeah. She's like, a little. He's like, oh, me too, actually. You. Oh, no. Ow! Oh, damn it! Oh, anyway. no, you woke something up inside of no, me. No, Dinah! So <laughs> he goes, "What's the, where's the serum? What's, where's, the, where's the antidote? And she goes, there isn't one. What are you, stupid? And he goes, no! She does her creepy yeah, finger thing. Yeah, she does thing. her finger thing. Yeah. He's like, all right, we might as well bang then. Fen takes his children and presumably Wilkins into a helicopter uh -huh. and flies it over Appleville because Fen's like, Ivy's not on the level she's gonna screw me over i laced the entire town with explosives so once the once the disease hits the market i'm gonna double cross her blow up the whole town and cover up all my loose ends he's like i already tapped that i'm good yeah i know what i was, I was missing out on exactly i'm fine this is how their mother died too i had sex with her and after she gave birth to you i, blew I killed up the her town. <laughs> i blew up the whole town uh, so arrow says it's best line of the book because you're the nastiest bitch i've ever met and then she sucks on her finger again. And then he goes, let's do this. I don't think they're going to bang at all. No. So. But I had my arrow. <laughs> she she reveals her whole thing where she's like, I'm going to save humanity by destroying like most of it. And yeah. It's going to like, it'll come out of the Oh, well, she's like the Thanos of this universe. Basically, yeah. Except like more than 50%. <laughs> well, you're going to lose a few. Yeah. So. <laughs> what is your definition of a few? A few trillion? <laughs> what? <laughs> Finger? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Arrow's like, well, screw you. You're coming with me. We're going to go. And I'm going to try and synthesize a... F I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, but we're going to go and figure it out. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Oh, that's Batman. So he's dragging her out of there. And then Fen's like, okay, kaboom. Hits the thing. The town starts blowing up. Ollie and uh, Poison Ivy get separated. Uh, Ollie tries to get to Poison Ivy, uh -huh. but the flames get too big and too overwhelming. So okay. he can barely escape with his life. I really hope Fen is in the helicopter right now playing the 1812 overture for his kids as everything's exactly. blowing up. It's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. isn't that great kids? And they're like, yay, ice cream. <laughs> yeah. So Those kids are going to need serious therapy. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Batman finds Ollie as Ollie's starting to pass out. And then Jason reveals that he survived this onslaught for a second. He's like clearly covered in sores. I don't think he's diseased. I think it's more like they're burns. Okay. And uh, so he attacks Batman. And then Batman just like, takes him down in a really oddly drawn panel. Yeah, what? I don't know what he does. Maybe he just punches him as he falls down. I think that's what the move is yep. here, but... Okay? Yeah, so it's funny. <laughs> oh! Because, There's uh, no way he'd make it over. No. no. I flailed enough. Yeah. So Batman falls over, and Oliver says something like, maybe I could have saved her, but I don't think I ever... But I don't think I want to. Oh, Ivy? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, not Dinah. When Jason, when Jason attacks Batman, he like kind of admonishes Green Arrow by saying like, "She liked you. Why did you do that?" And he says, "Maybe I could have saved her, but I didn't want to." <laughs> so then uh, Ollie wakes up in the hospital, and he says like, "So you know, any word on Dinah?" And Batman's like, "No change." He goes, "Well, then we have something in common. We're both gonna die." <laughs> And he says, no, you, the burns aren't too bad. You're going to be fine. He goes, no, not the burns, the poison. I'm riddled with it. He goes, it's true, but you remember what Parsons said about the cure, about the skeletons. Yeah. Got a cure. And I figured out what he meant. It's not skeletons he meant. He's talking about bones. He says the cure is a bone marrow transplant. What? 
So then we, we kind of like fade between Batman explaining it to Ollie to Ollie explaining it to Dinah, both of whom are okay now. And Ollie explains to her that like antibodies to the disease were developed in the bone marrow of anyone who was exposed to it. And Jason was, but he was one of like the 1% of people who would be immune to the disease. Right. And Jason survived. So they extracted the bone marrow from Jason and made the cure for Ollie and Dinah. Right. And then... But that's it. That's it. Because Jason died. So... They couldn't synthesize anything else from it? No. Oh. But, you know, the only two people who matter who were exposed to the disease were Ollie and Dinah. Right. Other than the fact that you were exposed to probably like a billion other poisons and toxins. Yeah. And what about the family? Oh, the family? Yeah. Well, they're at home and then Batman just breaks into their house uh -huh. and he says like, Hi. You're gonna die. You and your children are going to die. Ha! <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. And, uh... He doesn't say your I'm children... I'm not going to save you. And then you must be thinking right now about who else was infected. And he collapses on the ground and he says, The children. And the book ends with Batman standing over him saying, Yes, the children. End of book. Holy crap! <laughs> what? He's like, You're dead. And you killed your children. You douche. And... I'm not going to save any of you. I can't. There's nothing I can do, man. I mean... No. Nope. Science? Sorry. Anything? Science explained the cure. Science explained the cure, but like, maybe you could synthesize a treatment it's or hard. something for the kids? No. The kids. They're dead. <sighs> They're the walking dead. They're not even... They don't even know how dead they are. If they don't become Batman villains at some point in the future, or Green Arrow no, villains... No, none of them amazed. become Green Arrow or They're Batman dead. villains. They're dead. They die. Like how Parsons. Quickly, Remember, Dinah gets bit, and then, like, the next day, she's done. Bizarre. Bizarre. It's not great. Bizarre. Like, at all. The mystery is neat. Poison Ivy's a credible threat. Yes. Although she's defeated but by so a hand is, push. So is Finn. Yeah. Finn? Finn's a monster. And well, also... She's, she's defeated by um, a lot of explosives. Yes. Yes, it's true. She might have actually given Ali a run for his money if she weren't taken aback by her entire house exploding in front of her. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, it, 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 here's the thing. It's just dark. <laughs> it's very dark. And it's, like, deceptive in its darkness. Like, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, whatever. And then you find out. And the plan, I, on, you know, most of the time when I read kind of these stories, the plan is so asinine or it's so circuitous or it's part of, like, some other thing or, like, it involves something that doesn't need to be. No. Like, they're both assholes. They both have their own plans. They both double cross each other to make them think they're on the same page of their own plans. And both of them work for the characters. Yes. Like, and, yeah. I'm gonna make a whole lot of money. I'm gonna kill half the, like, a ton of the population. Exactly. Just totally works. And Ollie's motivated to be kind of like a jackass because the one thing in the whole world he cares about is at it, is it risk. Yeah. No, it's true. Like, it's just like, they're just literally, like, they're in the middle of the park. They're totally gonna, like, make out and or bang. And meanwhile, Batman's like, sorry, kids. You're dead. Ollie wanted to bang Dinah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Does Ollie have the antibodies in his bone marrow? Can we synthesize it from him? Yeah. No, it's a one-use thing, and then it destroys itself. I don't know. Yeah, antibodies to the disease are generated in the bone marrow. The medics put some bone marrow with the right antibodies in us, and our own Im immune systems took hold. Yeah. Wow, Batman. Yeah. He's like, nah. And by the way, you, you, you're meant to, like, uh, they're just children. But when <laughs> but when Finn starts to bomb the town, the kid's yeah. like, yay! <laughs> so, like, the kids don't really have a good shot no. at being decent. No. They're, like, they're like eight. So, no. Like, the, it's un... Uh, well, they have no moral compass. It's, it's, it's unreasonable to assume that these kids were doomed and so they needed to die. No. Our father's rich. We get ice cream whenever we want. We have a car phone. Yeah. We Do you have... know that? A car phone. Tiffany, they're eight. They're already over the car phone. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, that, that's lame. That and Green Arrow, The Poison Tomorrow. This is weird. So weird. So bizarre. I have many copies. I don't know if they're available online. If they are, you can bet you can find it in the description below this video because I will make it available. You got, if you're a Batman fan, you got to read this. If you're a closet Green Arrow fan, or if you're like a passing Green Arrow fan, you might enjoy this. It, I think it's a great read right after you read Longbow Hunters, because it's such it's such a like depressing, miserable experience. And then you get to this, and you're like, oh, that's also depressing and miserable. Is this all Green Arrow is? Because <laughs> like I, I think that the reason why it's so miserable and so dark is because of the presence of Ollie. 
that Ollie makes it darker, which is ironic because it's Batman. Yeah. But like well, Batman would just be going on and like researching I mean, things. But it's Batman's villain who actually is enacting one of these messed up dark plans. I'm just saying that like the presence of Ollie like tipped the scales of reality such that it like made Poison Ivy come up with this horrible scheme she never does again. That's anything close to this. No. I love it. I think it's I think it's fun. It's a great relic. If you are interested, check it out. Otherwise, we'll see you guys here on Bat Issues next time. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. I'm Tiffany. So long. Thanks for watching. Can we get car phones? You have a car phone, Tiffany. No, I want elaborate car phones. Yeah. yeah I want a car phone that's tethered to the car. Yeah, I want it to take up a portion of the car I could use for something else. Yeah. 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 And if you're on the phone and you get to your destination, you have to end the call. Yeah. Because you have to leave. Yeah. Well, you have to turn the car off. Right. I, I gotta go. I gotta go in inside. Where my regular phone is, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I'll call you back at five. <laughs> hey, make sure you hang up so I can get through. Yeah. Hey, I'm calling you from my house phone. Well, you've got a house phone? <laughs> yeah, since 1930 freaking eight. <laughs>